Yeah. Jake's work, he's got three bars over here. We need garbage cans at Barnes and Bidden. Looking for his cat. This is how they got the main. So, 521. So we're gonna check his other hiding place. I don't know how I put up with everyone. We got him? We got him. Woo! They are trash. Good jump. On stock bars, they shouldn't, they shouldn't have this. Look at this. Can you see my radio? Randy, can you see the radio? No, no. So lots of customers are coming in and like, hey man, you can't see your radio. I'm like, man, I run my phone on my phone mount. I don't even look at my radio. I want to see my gauges. So this is the Krauss Moto Dyno Moto front end, the whole kit with inverted Oleans, okay? There's another kit they have where you run your factory fork with their new Wolf Triple Tree top plate where you keep your factory fork. But we also run multiple different configurations of bar riser with bars to gauge location. I don't care about my radio, so I don't mind it blocking it because I run everything off of my iPhone, which clips onto my Rock 4 mount, which is probably one of the best ones on the market. But there are customers that want to see the radio. We have another bike that's a road glide set up in the shop. We'll show you how that looks sitting on it because this one, in my view, I'm only seeing the top inch of my radio on my bike. But we can make it where you see your radio and then we want to go over the new Wolf top plate that Kraus Moto came out with and the options available for different bar risers, different handlebars, and why we use these guys and push them. Aaron's got it all set up on a table. He did it this time. Mike's going to build it eventually. Come on, check it out. Where I'm sitting on this bike, my head angle, if you notice, the gauges are now closer to me instead of on the back side of the handlebars. With them being closer to me, and the straight bar, that is the Raptor plate. Two plates, the Raptor and the T-Rex. So different configurations right on that plate. We'll go over that, but with the straight bar riser sitting on this where my head angle is, I can see my gauges up close and I have full view of my radio. So a little different setup than the bike we had up front, which is mine, to a customer's bike we set up to his specs. And we just wanna go over the different configurations because a lot of customers out there or riders out there don't realize multiple different setups with this. Now we're going to go over what we're doing to this bike right behind me which has Krauss Moto's new Wolf One, Bagger Top Tree. Okay this allows us to do that setup <clears throat> and not run your factory triple tree. When you run the factory triple tree it's just not pretty. This is to get that bar set up make the top look pretty but you don't have to buy the Olean's inverted fork and brakes to get it done. Cross Moto has several different riser options available. Um, they have them in straight, they have them in kickbacks. This right here is a 10 inch ISO kickback riser. We can get the handlebars in the same location by doing a T-Rex plate or one of the other plates on the bottom to get this setup we have right below us. Randy will have a cool picture of this guy. Take a look at this plate right here. That's how we're getting the pull back to the customer. It'll be in slow motion, him going through it. But this guy's super cool. You have a brace in the middle. It's just real rigid. Something else that this guy has that no one else has is the factory bushings on your Harley handlebars are in your triple tree on your bike on the bottom. Well, for factory handlebars, these little guys work fine because the amount of leverage you have from the is like right here. You got a little bit of leverage. You can squish these, there's a little play. When customers start putting bigger handlebars on them, we immediately trash these guys. At the beginning or the end of this, you'll see how we found these. They were with the mangy cat from Shane. <laughs> you didn't see that, but no. it was good. Polyurethane, next best step. A lot more rigid, but still not as good as this. This is the setup we run with the ISO risers. This guy is solid, no movement down here. Bar gets mounted to him, boom, solidly. Right here inside this guy, they're moving the bushing to the top. So instead of having this much, which on these bars, this is a two inch rise on top of a 10 inch riser, 
you have 12 inches of leverage pulling on these guys on the bottom. So now they're hard mounted with an aluminum bushing. The bushing with the give is then moved to the top, which you have two inches of rise and it's maybe a half of inch below here. So you have two and a half inches of leverage instead of 12 inches of leverage, right. which makes it feel more stable. Once you sit on one of these, you can grab them going to corners. It's probably the best feeling bar I've ever had on any of my Harleys. Therefore, I have it on every bike I own. My FXR has it on it. My Dyna has it. My Road Glide has it. I have these bars on all my bikes. That way, when I go from one to another, they all feel consistent and they're real easy to transition from bike to bike during different rides. I spent some time on your bike and it just, uh, it's such a confidence inspiring feeling. It's comfortable, number one, but just that kind of moto elbows up feel that this setup will deliver for you is uh, pretty incredible. We know, we know the T-Bar setup's not for everyone. And this isn't the old school T-Bar. This is kind of your new performance bagger T-Bar that's been on the market for a while. The reason we like this instead of the old school one is this guy has adjustment and you have options for different bars. This is the Flymoto aluminum bar that Krauss has available. They also have their own bar that they make with different options as far as coatings on them on these. So um, just a different configuration, more adjustability, more options moving this forward, up, down, and bars being rotated back for angle for you. Very cool setup. Gauge location, take it over. Gauge relocation. So, what do you do with your gauges when you have your bars where your gauges would normally be? You relocate them. That's what this is for. Sits right up in here. I think he's already covered some of the locations you can mount that in. But just, again, beautiful machine work. Anodizing is absolutely beautiful. And these work with the factory gauges. These also work with the uh, Dakota Digitals, which if you can get your hands on a set and put those in here, they look amazing when you mount them on like this bike. If we look at this guy behind me, or my bike, there's no more ignition switch. They're gone, all right? So all these bikes are set up with security with a security fob. Now the bikes are wired up only with security, no ignition, okay? That's how I run mine. That's how this bike's being run. When you go to the Wolf top tree from Kraus, there's a little guy here. There's an option for a lock or no lock. I'm not running a lock on my bike. The bike behind me is not locking or running a lock. This guy, you can purchase a lock, which would be your steering lock. If you want to lock your steering, buy their lock. There's a couple bolt holes to get you a key. Boom, you have your own setup. This bike is being run like a CVO or a bike that's like our new soft tails or a Sportster from Harley where there's no lock, no ignition. You walk up with your key fob and the key fob is the only thing that unlocks the bike where you can start it and rock and roll. No longer have to mess with your ignition up front. If you do want the steering lock, it is available. It's a separate purchase. You need to specify when you get your top tree if you want the lock for steering lock or not. So, right there. Most guys choose not to go with it. You can add it later. It's real easy. Two bolts. If you can't do this yourself, I don't recommend riding the bike we're putting it on. All right.